So the labor market graph indicates the economy's supply and demand for labor, and consequently the economy's employment, as a function of the real wage. It appears that there is labor market equilibrium at the real wage, W over P sub zero, and employment, L star. We call equilibrium employment structural employment. Assume now that, for some reason, the real wage increases to W over P sub one. At that real wage, the supply of labor is L sub 1. However, it appears from the labor demand curve that firms will only pay the lower real wage of W over P sub 2 if employment is L sub 1. Realizing that they will only get paid a real wage of W over P sub 2, labor is only willing to supply L sub 2. A supply of labor so low that firms are willing to pay a real wage of W over P sub 3. And thus, market forces and flexible wages and prices drive the real wage back to W over P sub 0 and employment to L star, generating labor market equilibrium. Notice that since the labor force is either employed or unemployed, Increasing or decreasing employment is mirrored in decreasing or increasing unemployment. In labor market equilibrium, that is, at structural employment, unemployment is structural unemployment, sometimes called natural unemployment. In practice, the business cycle may generate employment that differs from structural employment, and thus, unemployment that differs from structural unemployment. The difference between actual and structural employment is cyclical employment, and the difference between actual and structural unemployment is cyclical unemployment. However, as we've seen, a flexible real wage quickly closes gaps between structural and actual employment and unemployment and reestablishes labor market equilibrium.